Just to explain why a co-living DAO is so important, there are now, uh, Niklas just published a map uh, in regards to the current state of the network state movement. And I saw like five um, projects who want to be a co-living DAO basically in this direction. And it's really needed because we need physical outlets. So cloud first, territory last. And uh, yeah, David and uh, uh, Daniel and Garrett, it's your stage, tell your story and tell how you want to turn this into reality in simple English, you know, <laughs> so. Awesome, we will. Can we get uh, uh, the share screen rates? Cool, we'll put up a little simple presentation, which is the, an adapted version of the one that we pitched to Shark Tank Malta. So give me one sec and we'll put that up. And can everyone see that okay? Yes. Perfect. We're going to slideshow mode. All right. So yeah, folks, I'm Gareth. This is Daniel. We're a co-living DAO. And the tagline is own where you rent from day one and have a real voice to shape your community. So we um, met and became friends in the UK's largest co-living, uh, which started in 2016. We met in 2018. And co-living, I think everyone's familiar here, but it's a new way of living where residents get their own room or apartment and then access to shared facilities. Often very convenient and the rent covers all bills in one. And it's a great way when you're moving to a big city like London um, to meet like-minded people and create long-lasting bonds. The downside, obviously, is that after a few years of living there, we both lived there for a few years each, we, we owned nothing and we paid rent every single month. And the co-living operator, the landlord, really pursued their own agenda and causing a lot of dissatisfaction in the community. And we can tell you a hundred stories about all the weird things that happened with mismanagement and strange management decisions to really fracture and, and prevent the community from becoming a really valuable place where people love to live. So we, we always had fun chats about, you know, there must be a better way to do this. And actually both of us were working in two different technology or innovation areas. I was working in governance innovation. Daniel was working in finance, DeFi, crypto innovation. And when we got chatting, we realized that the solution might be actually a hybrid of both of them. So that was a pretty exciting moment. Yeah, so the reason this is coming about is, uh, first of all, we noticed there's a, a global housing supply crisis and uh, the price is just going up uh, a lot. And a lot of people are no longer able to be homeowners. Uh, at the same time, we see that there are these uh, aspirations of individu individualistic living right now in the world, and it's destroying communities, it's destroying the ecosystems as well. It's a problem for the people, it's a problem for the environment. Uh, and I do see many system changers that are trying to find new ways uh, to arrange community living, uh, but it's not very easy to scale the models. I see models here and there, but no one has found really a way to scale the creation of uh, communities. Uh, so we need a, a better way uh, to have property ownership and a better way to uh, or organize regenerative community living. Now, the, the main problem for regenerative co-living communities is, first of all, the traditional ownership and governance systems don't give any voice to the residents. So there is dissatisfaction amongst people. There is a uh, there there is a lack of belonging as well in that sense. Uh, also. Yeah, the systems that people have used, uh, some systems work better than others, but no one has come up with something that can scale very well. For operators, uh, it's also a problem. The current existing uh, rental, purely on a rental basis, co-living model is a problem because there's no ownership and uh, the resident turnover is very high and the maintenance can be uh, very costly. Sales marketing can be very costly. So our solution is a software platform uh, for regenerative communities and for living operators uh, that enables residents uh, to effectively receive shares with each monthly payments. Uh, these shares also give them a, a voice uh, to shape their community. So they're getting ownership and they're getting governance. Uh, it, the decision to use blockchain is because these shares need to be very easy to transact with. So buy, sell, issue. 
That's why we use a Web3 blockchain. And the benefits are very obvious. First of all, uh, communities can have a blueprint that is a uh, turnkey ready to go whenever a group of people or even one leader wants to create a community they have uh, a blueprint that they can use uh, which has a multi-stakeholder wealth and governance sharing uh, traditional co-living operators will reduce turnover costs marketing costs sales costs maintenance and increase the revenue uh, and co-living residents they own the place they live from uh, from day one uh, and they have a true voice in shipping their community so um, the blueprint that's ready to go is unique out there because it's a scalable blueprint. So it's not just applying to one, like there's loads of people trying to make eco villages and, you know, the future of living, regenerative housing, living out in the countryside or in cities and doing it a different way. And those, those models quite often are amazing and innovative, but they're not scalable. So Cool Living DAO is a scalable blueprint for multiple co-livings cool or regenerative communities, depending on how you describe it. Um, and this works with Cool Living DAO as an enabler company, which creates and holds the Cool Living DAO software on Web3. And then each co-living cool community or regenerative community plugs in to the Cool Living DAO enabler company. Each of those communities is its own autonomous company as well. But uh, we use a unique... Um, legal incorporation that enables each co-living company to be its own company, but to transact and own shares in the co-living DAO enabler company and vice versa. So there's very strong links across them. Um, and a bit more on, on how the residents get a real voice. Obviously, they're going to be shareholders, and so they can vote as shareholders, but it goes way beyond that. We're using a DAO because a DAO is a way of organizing the co-living community to enable residents to vote and coordinate their decisions easily. And not just on votes that rise all the way up to, I'm a shareholder, I need to vote. That would be pretty high level voting. But you can also vote at much lower decision levels within a DAO to organize a community like, hey, guys, what do we want on Saturday afternoon? Do we, do we want yoga or do we want a comedian to come in? That doesn't need to be a shareholder vote, right? It can go down to a lower decision-making protocol layer. It doesn't even need to be on the DAO necessarily, but the DAO would enable it to go to a, a residence vote or a, a multi-stakeholder vote if it was needed. So a de this, <clears throat> the key difference here is that a decentralized community requires a decentralized multi-stakeholder company and corporation. You need both. You need to make sure residents have legally protected voting rights and voting power. And the company and corporation must be compatible with a DAO. We've seen that in the crypto world in particular is a decentralized world kind of in name, but often the companies that control crypto are actually centralized entities and they have a centralized point of failure. This is a way to remove a centralized point of failure to make this a tr truly scalable decentralized solution. Um, we use a fair shares commons company structure, which is a legal incorporation built on 150 years of cooperative wisdom. It is basically a co-op, but it's been enhanced um, by some leading thinkers, a guy from uh, Sheffield University, Rory Ridley Duff, Professor Rory Ridley Duff, and Graham Boyd, who is um, a kind of visionary pioneer who is looking how do we build the paradigm shift to regenerative society type of thinking so they came together and they enhanced the co-op so this is a recognized legal entity built on cooperative law the key benefit here is that it's not only investors that benefit all primary stakeholders benefit in the wealth that's generated and they have a voice yeah. that for me my motivation here is really on the environmental side as well as the people side and when you have multi-stakeholder power that's truly decentralized you can um, share decision making and pro and uh, wealth sharing, and legally embed incentives to regenerate the well being of people, natural ecosystems, and make money at the same time. Yeah, the living industry is uh, growing. Of course, you all know that very well. So since 2015, uh, it's uh, been growing exponentially. The CAGR for living is estimated. At from on the low end, let's say 11%, on the high end, even all the way up to 30%. And uh, 
there's a uh, in, in UK alone, for example, they estimate 725,000 people in the core target market, and that's purely on the rental basis. So it's going to be even higher once uh, we add the um, ownership basis as well. So definitely, the industry is uh, where capital is flowing as well in terms of investment too. And uh, what we're building is a is a platform. Effectively, uh, it's a SaaS platform, so it's going to be software, uh, and we have a uh, multiple features that allow uh, successful management of the co living space for residents for for the managers for investors and for partners so they all have their own user account that they can all use the platform to do things such as for example buying and selling shares uh, paying securely um, um, receiving rental yield automatically receiving dividends automatically uh, getting rent reduction through uh, token locking getting discounts for token locking and so on so the share governance can happen on the on the platform as well, uh, we have a mock-up of what the the platform, the, the platform can look like. And uh, effectively, we need about 42 weeks from the moment we start the development. We build the software architecture already. What we need is to uh, build the actual code. Uh, so from the moment we start the development, we estimate about 42 weeks uh, to be ready to go. So I guess, guys, Daniel, go. We can we can continue. We've got other detail here, but I mean, we've given you the basic flavor. So we can stop there and go into a Q&A if that, if that makes sense, or we can keep going. Up to you. No, I think Q&A makes sense. No, Severin, because I think we are all experts here. We understood uh, what you're trying to do. So now it's time to take it apart and discuss it. I can only share my story. Um, I was born in East Germany, and my father was the head of, is still the head of the biggest housing cooperative in Germany. We have 30,000 apartments and they managed to take this idealistic uh, socialist idea of co-owned property and transferred it over into a capitalist market. And this is existing now since 32 years. They are the cheapest, they are the best. And you own a share of this cooperative. So it's definitely uh, possible. It's working since 30 years. Um, and I think we can roll it out to the whole world, you know, using a DAO. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Thank uh, you. We're open, open the floor to any questions yeah. or interesting points of discussion. So would I be right in saying that the the law that the laws of countries for the most part don't actually <laughs> recognize DAOs in any particular way and that what's happening is that you've got this company that the law recognizes and the, the law of any country but of the countries recognize that the company owns the land and the houses. And then somehow in the articles of incorporation in the company, like the, 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 through the way you write the contract, somehow that gives the, the DAO legal force through some kind of binding contract that you write. Is that how it roughly works? Or? That's exactly how it works. Yeah. So you cannot register a DAO as a company except in Wyoming in the US, as far as I'm aware today. And when you register, so if you, you know, the problem of registering a DAO as a private limited company is you have a centralized point of failure in a DAO and it negates the power of the DAO. Yeah, I sort of, uh, I, I guess, uh, I, I guess uh, the technical uh, mechanism for writing the articles of incorporation that transfer that, that, that give the DAO kind of power through some kind of contract in, in when the articles of incorporation of a company are quite complicated to actually like explain in full yeah that's why we're leaning on the brains of others who created the fair shares commons which is a ready-to-go decentralized structure um with you, you know 10 years of thinking behind it so it's kind of plug and play. We just, what we need to do though, is we need to customize the DAO to fit with the legal incorporation structure to make sure that the two are completely interconnected, which is why it needs to be a custom software build. That's one of the primary reasons. But yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly right. And so the shares will then be tradable um, on chain? And represent ownership like so so i i have a share so it's basically real estate backed shares tradable on chain yes exactly so they're not uh, directly real estate shares they're uh, company shares and the company owns the real estate there is a little bit of room to play with this because we'll have to comply with the local regulations regarding property 
so it might slightly differ in in each country but the the uh, standard idea so whatever it's allowed to do so the shares are the company shares and because the share owns the property people have exposure to the value of the property uh, but it's not only that they actually have exposure to the entire co-living business as well uh, so effectively we're talking about tokens that are securities so they are tokenized securities uh, so we also bypass all the issues that we have nowadays with uh, um, web3 tokens being deemed securities out of the blue and, uh, and and causing risks because effectively we're designing the whole system where the shares are the, the tokens are already securities yeah we're going to basically say that these tokens are securities up front i i don't understand how that works because um because like uh my understanding of like issuing shares and all that is there's all this like paperwork and directors meetings and stuff like that in order to like issue legal shares to people um so i don't understand how that can be like simplified in the eyes of the law um in the in in the in in, in the form of like you know doing tokens on chain so the dao people obviously you can write a dao where tokens be traded on chain very easily but how do you transfer that into people actually owning shares in the company that is kind of legally recognized in the nation as owning the the property yeah so there are countries where it's possible to pretty much instantly issue shares that are tokenized it's not possible in every country at the moment so part of the work we're doing is to find a legal framework where it, it can be done pretty much everywhere or at least in a, in a, most countries gradually will expand to more and more countries so in certain countries you can do it already uh, in other countries we might have to go through different countries and maybe register part of the entity Let, let's say one entity in one country one entity in another country and find the actual structure ultimately we we hope to be able to do it everywhere but surely we'll be starting from the places where it's possible and uh, the direction that the world is taking as well is uh, uh, things are going to get simplified many countries that didn't allow simple um, shares issuance in the past they do allow it now uh, so we also want to see a change but we can't wait for it that's why we're creating all this uh, infrastructure which will make it possible in as many countries as possible i'd be really interested if you could uh, if you had a powerpoint slide if you want to give any future presentations about it one thing that i'd be interested in is would be to see a slide with all the countries where it's uh, where where issuing kind of shares automatically is is legal because that sounds like it's really uh, it's it's really kind of fundamental to to making these data things work smoothly Okay. Thank yeah, you. I think, mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry, I think uh, I'm going to interject here so we can move on to the next talk and then we have a little bit of discussion uh, once we had everything. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.